your soul I know a place where mercy flows Take the stones and make you whiter than snow Like a tide that fries you deep inside Like a current that moves makes you come alive Living water brings the dead back to life We're going down to the river There we go. Try that again. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I thought I sounded kind of faint. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. Moms are just the best. Um, we just have one quick announcement to get to before uh, we begin worship today. Um, Sandy Wilkerson uh, unfortunately passed away late last night. Uh, Sandy often worshiped with us here at this first service. Um, so please continue to, uh, to lift up uh, the Wilkerson family uh, and Tina Calhoun in your prayers. Uh, this She's, I think, barely six months removed from losing her father as well, so uh, it's going to take a rallying of the church family to come around them and uh, show them love in this time, and we'll certainly be praying for them uh, it, during our, our prayer time at the church. Before we continue with worship, we ask that you please stand as we confess uh, our sins recognize the need of a savior you can follow along here on the screens maybe <laughs> what's that jake nope is it behind it's behind me you know what i'm gonna do this i like to walk into the nave anyway so god of all mercy and consolation come to the aid of your people give us the power of your holy spirit that attentive to your word we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. 
Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all of your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May he strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And let's join together and worship our Lord. Amen. It is so good to get together to remind each other that we are who God says we are. We don't always feel righteous, but he has made us righteous by his sacrifice. Why don't you turn and say hi to folks around you. Happy Mother's Day.
on what's being said and just be ready to go back into singing and use that time to reflect. settle in your presence. So Lord, help us on Sundays and each day of the week to take moments 
to be in our quiet time, to be close to you, to worship you, praise you, and connect with you. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Our gospel text today is found in the 17th chapter of John, beginning in the 6th verse. Jesus is praying here. He says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me. And they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those who have given, you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. And so we have a different tone in our gospel text today. A shift has taken place. Jesus is no longer preaching as he had been uh, over the past few weeks as we've been working our way through, through John and John 15. But now he goes on and he's praying. And it's in this prayer that Jesus has that we see God revealed. God reveals himself in Jesus through the words that the Father has given his Son, through Jesus' words. Now contextually we're finding ourselves in between two very significant events. Uh, what takes place prior to this prayer is that Jesus has shared this last supper with the disciples. And while he was in the upper room with them, he washed the disciples' feet. Uh, we hear this lengthy sermon that we've been covering the last few weeks where Jesus promises them and teaches them about the Holy Spirit. He identifies himself as the gate and as the good shepherd. He is the vine to which the God the Father grafts us to. He's the source of life. And then after these events, the chief priests are going to arrive with Judas. Jesus will be betrayed. He'll be tried and convicted and killed on a cross. But it's in between there that we find ourselves, Jesus has left the upper room and now he's praying this prayer. And there's another kind of an important contextual note here. Uh, we're on the last Sunday of Easter in the church calendar. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter. And even though our gospel text kind of has us right back in the passion of, uh, of Christ. But this past Thursday in the church calendar, we observed the ascension of Christ into heaven. And so why does that matter? While timeline-wise, what we're seeing in John six, or 17 in Jesus' prayer and, and the ascension that was celebrated this last Thursday, they don't line up with each other. There's a lot that takes place in between them. 
there's a shared theme between these two events. And Jesus mentions this repeatedly. He is about to leave the world. I'm no longer with you, he says. And so that leaves the disciples and us pondering and asking questions. Well, what next? What does that mean for Jesus to not be in the world? What are we going to do without Jesus walking physically right alongside us? He said he was protecting us. What now? And we'll question if this is true. If Jesus actually isn't in the world, then how can he be working in our lives? How can he be active in the world? And so in this prayer, we see assurance that Jesus is giving us. He reveals that he is not going to leave the disciples or us as orphans, but he's going to give us the Spirit. And we're going to see this play out next week as we uh, observe and celebrate the day of Pentecost. But the Spirit is given to keep us in the word that Christ has given us. That's what the Spirit does. He draws you to this word. He brings you before someone proclaiming what Jesus has done and what he is doing for you. And so what is that word doing? What does Jesus reveal? What are the words that the Spirit is bringing you to today? It's God revealed. God has revealed himself through the words of Jesus Christ. Like Jesus' words aren't just his own. They are actually the Father's words. And so when Jesus speaks his words, they're not words that Jesus is making up. These aren't his own thoughts or his own musings. Jesus in verse 6 says, I gave them the words that you gave me. Christ has revealed God the Father to those who the Father gave him. And we know who God is, and we know who God is because he has revealed himself through the words that he gave Jesus to speak. And the word that God has given Jesus to speak, the revelation of God, is mercy. It's the revelation of God's mercy through the words of Jesus Christ. That's the linchpin in this whole thing. We can't go any further in this prayer without having this knowledge on the forefront of our mind, of knowing who God is. God is mercy to you. God has given you to Christ, or as we Uh, Read a couple weeks ago, as Jesus put it, he has grafted you into the vine. You were his, and he gave you to Christ to have mercy over you. To know that God favors and blesses you. God chose you to hear his mercy. And so as Jesus departs, he gives the Spirit. But with Jesus is going out of the world, that doesn't mean that he's like completely removing himself from the situation. And that there's not going to be any interaction between himself and in the world. But rather, in his physical departure of the world, he's able to usher in this new creation. Because the world is one of sin and law and death. And that's not Christ. That's not who Jesus is. That's not this new creation. The new world that he is creating is one that is breaking into this world based on mercy. It it, it defies the world's laws. And the world's not going to like that. But that is the mercy of God revealed to you. Mercy comes in and kills the law. It ends death. But the world won't stand idly by and just watch this happen. There's going to be an attack on God's word. There's going to be other words that the world will try to give you to replace the word of mercy that has been revealed through Jesus Christ, that has been given to you. Words that might seem like they give life, or they give a better life, or something that's a little more exciting, something more desirable. Words that will say that you don't really need mercy. Because if you need mercy, that means you're guilty of something, and you're really not that bad. It's all good. The dirty secret is that you and I desire these other words. And it's been this way since the beginning. We always can go back to Genesis 3. God gives Adam an evil word. But they want a different one. And so Satan offers up one that they like better. And they take it. So there's this extreme danger to be pulled away from Christ's word of mercy 
and to place your identity somewhere else. To make the promise of Christ secondary to other things. Things of this world. We have a name for those things. They're called idols. And yes, you'll confess some of them. But most of them you are going to fight God tooth and nail about. We'll complain that the world isn't conforming to us. Or that Jesus isn't conforming to us. We don't fully understand what we mean when we hear that the world is in the grip of sin, death, and the devil. Like when we look at, at, at our world, this old crea- the old kingdom, we imagine that all it needs is just a little bit of a tune-up. We recognize the brokenness around us and we say, just needs a fresh coat of paint. Just a little tweaking. Boy, this, this place would be good. And we somehow think that we're going to be a part of that process of redeeming the world. If the world would just conform to what we're saying in our values, then everything will be fine. But what that is is a failure to comprehend how deep of a ditch we're actually in. In sin. In rebellion. That this world is a total gut job. It's not just a light renovation. It's why Christ is bringing forth this new creation. There's no life outside of the words of Christ. There's no peace. There's no answer to death that's all around us. And because of that death, because of the lack of peace, the world is going to try to convince you and say, see, how could God be a God of mercy? Just look around. The evidence abounds. Just look at the state of the world. In. It doesn't take too much digging to find suffering and strife and violence and disaster. I flipped open my phone just this morning just to find some headlines, and right away it was just like war, conflict, protesting, rigged elections. I mean, just like Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, different wars in different smaller countries. It, it just doesn't seem to end. We saw a tornado touchdown in in. in the southwest portion of our state last week and destroyed businesses and homes. We see the effects of sin all around, and that's not even, that's just what's widely visible. That's not even counting the things that each and every one of you and I are battling on a daily basis. Those things that the world will use to foster unbelief and to try to convince that God is not actually for you. That mercy is not his name. And the world hates this word of mercy that Jesus gives. Why? Because the world cannot stand that God is not mercy, that God is mercy, that he's not law. The world wants to remove God's mercy. It wants to keep you on your toes, ever aware, kind of keeping your head on a swivel, living by the rules that it sets. And we know the rules. Do good, receive good. Do bad, be punished. It's simple. It's fair. It makes sense in this kingdom. But then here comes Jesus with the audacity to say, no, you don't need the way of the world. I'm saving you from that way. All you need and all you will see is my mercy around you. The world can't handle the fact that God is unfair. And he's unfair to you. If God were fair, then then, then you and I would have been cooked a long time ago, right? Even though you did bad, even though you deserve bad, because we know the wages of sin are death. Instead, Jesus sanctifies you. And when he says that he sanctifies you, he's, he's not saying that you know, you're fulfilling the laws and the demands after you've been saved. It's not preserving faith after you've been given it. But what the sanctification that Jesus is talking about is the holy uniting with the unholy. And the two exchanging these things. So that those who were unholy become holy. And, those who, and he who was holy becomes unholy. He who knew no sin became your sin took it to the cross, died with it there so that you would have righteousness. And because of the world, 
because of all of this, it's, the world's going to hate anyone who has this word and trusts in that promise. It's not playing by the rules. It's like a petulant child screaming, that's not fair. The world will not have it. And so in response, the world puts a target on your back, physically and spiritually. And we know the spiritual attacks. Thankfully, you know, here in our country that we live in, we don't really know actual persecution. Like none of us risk death or imprisonment or torture uh, as we gather to worship every week. We didn't have to sneak here under the cover of darkness. We just hopped in our cars and, and came to church. And that's a blessing. But it's not the reality for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. But that still doesn't change our human response to having this target placed on us. And why Jesus is praying the things that he's praying. Because the instinct that we have is to remove ourselves from the world. Cloister ourselves in. Get out of this mess and just get to the new kingdom as we imagine it. But then here comes Jesus saying... When you have my promise, you are not of this world, but I'm not taking you out of it either. Instead, I'm sending you into the world to deliver this very same promise that you've gotten from, other, from somebody. Somebody proclaimed this promise to you, and now you're going to take it to somebody who desperately needs to hear it. You are going to free people with my words given to him from God the Father. You're going to be protected, and you're going to be kept in that word. And to be kept in God's word is to have mercy rooted in your ears. Being kept in that word is, is not about your ability to keep this word perfectly. It's about knowing who Jesus is because Jesus Christ keeps this word. He keeps this mercy over you. And, and so when you have, there's an effect that happens when this word is rooted in your ear. You know it as the promised mercy of God. And then you stop wondering, well, what else do I have to do? Have I kept this word perfectly? And instead, you can just cling to it. You can hold this as a promise. You keep it because he keeps you in it. This is the new creation that Jesus is talking about. The creature of faith that comes through this word proclaimed. God keeps giving and you keep receiving. And now you're in a relationship where God gives and you receive. And there you are made new. Each and every day. God gives you this. You're made new. You receive. You receive the eternal life that God is giving you. Instead of just looking for better options of life out there. You have been delivered to Christ. And Jesus never loses anyone that the Father has given him. Despite your shortcomings, your desire to search for meaning elsewhere, to find a different word other than what God has given you, despite the idols that you and I want to cling to and try to justify, despite your unbelief, you are not given what you deserve. But you have been given mercy. And that is the very nature of God personified. Mercy. And having heard that mercy, you have been made into a new creation. A creation in eternal life. Comfortable with just being God's creature. No longer striving for righteousness or divinity on your own. But Christ gives you a promise that you can rest in. God is protecting you with Christ's words of mercy. Christ wraps you in his merciful arms and protects you from the darts and the lies and the deceptions that the world and that the enemy is going to hurl at you. He unites you together with him as one, just as the Father is united with the Son. Jesus ends your striving and has given you a new name, a new identity. We just sang about this at the beginning of service. He calls you forgiven. He calls you beloved. He calls you his favorite. He calls you child of God. Let's pray.
Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the revelation of God's mercy in Christ's prayer that he lifts up in between these events of the upper room and being led to his execution. Lord, we thank you for the new creation that you were making us to be. Lord, we thank you that you have chosen us to receive this mercy, that your Holy Spirit moved and brought us here today to hear this given to us again, and that you promise that you're going to continue to put these words back in our ears, that you are going to keep us in that word. Heavenly Father, equip us and empower us to go out, to not remove ourselves from the world, but to hear Jesus' words that while we are not of the world, he sends us into it to deliver those very same words of mercy, forgiveness, and freedom. We pray all this in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Great and mighty is he. Let us lift his name on high. join together in uh, prayers for the church. I'd like to ask anybody, are there any joys to lift up today? Janet? Kelsey and Jimmy celebrate their, wait, what year? Was it? <laughs> Just like trying to compute, it seems like it was not that long ago. Happy anniversary, Jimmy and Kelsey. Any other joys? I have one to lift up. Uh, today, Micah uh, gets to be the uh, play ball kid of the game at the Mud Hens. Uh, so if you happen to be going to the game, the kid that yells play ball into the microphone is going to be my kid. So <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're pretty excited for that. Do we have any additions to our prayer list today? In addition to uh, praying for the Wilkerson family, we also, uh, from the stream, uh, Carolyn Eaton has asked uh, for prayers as she fell at work and broke her elbow. Um, 
and she's got some face swelling and some bruising, so we'll pray for, for healing for Carolyn. Let's come together and pray. Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Lord, this, this, this new day, this new creation, Father, that you have given us. Lord, you are so good. Father, we, we, we thank you for, for birthdays and for anniversaries and, and for the, the evidence, uh, the visual blessings that, that we see and experience in our lives. And Father, we, we lift up Jimmy and Kelsey today as they, as they celebrate their anniversary upcoming. Father, we, uh, we thank you as we celebrate today our moms. But Lord, we recognize that this day is difficult for, for some people as well. And so, Lord, we pray for those who uh, mourn on today, Lord, who maybe have a difficult relationship with their mother. Lord, for uh, whom, whatever reason, Mother's Day is not a day of celebration. Lord, we pray that you uphold them. Lord, that you would uh, reveal your mercy and love and peace to them. And God, we, we lift all of those who are on our prayer list uh, this week. Father, we pray for Tom, Lord, for Jeffrey, for Katiana and uh, her family, Father, for safe travel for Brian and Logan, Lord, we pray for the family of Anne with her passing, Lord, we pray for Carolyn as she recovers from a fall, Lord, we pray that your healing hand would move over her, Lord, that uh, the healing process would take hold, Father, that uh, Lord, you have her in your hands. And Lord, we pray for the Wilkerson uh, family today with the passing of Sandy. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that Sandy uh, was to us as a church family here. Lord, we ask that you wrap Tina and Benny Jr. and, and Scott, Lord, in, in, in your arms of mercy and compassion as they grieve the loss of their mother. Father, that you would hold them tight. Lord, that you would rally your church family around them to support them in this time of need. Father God, we thank you for the words that you have given Jesus and that he has given to us, revealing your mercy. Father, that you have not just left us to our own devices to figure it out, but Lord, you have called, chosen us, adopted us into your family, Lord, made new and given new life. Let us so respond, Father, by going out and doing the very same to those who are still living and striving in darkness. Father, we pray this all in Jesus' most precious and holy name, praying this in the words that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time we'll receive our morning tithes and offerings. Uh, and while that's going around, uh, in your announcements, uh, there's, there's a bunch of uh, things going on here at the church, which is a, a wonderful thing. Just another reminder, the last week for uh, Sunday school is May 19th. So May 19th will be the last day uh, for Sunday school. Mark, you want to take things away? Hey, Let's sing one more. Not to us. Won't you stand if you can? All glory and honor and praise to you, Lord, not to us.
and serve the Lord. your 